It's Halloween weekend, and there were plenty of tricks and treats during the UPenn Quakers versus the Brown Bears football game here at Franklin Field. So who got the tricks and who got the treats? Well, it was definitely the Quakers getting the treat today with the win over the Bears 21-14. to And did I mention it was their homecoming as well? After the game, I spoke with junior wide receiver Justin Watson, who had a career day today, breaking a 13-year-old record. All right, so it's homecoming. It's got to be a special day. You had a special team in attendance, the 1986 team, the perfect team. Um, you know, what's it like to get a win on, on homecoming in front of a team like that and just in front of your fans? Yeah, definitely. We, uh, you know, homecoming, we try to block it out all week. But uh, like you said, there's definitely distractions and, and awesome things going on. And uh, we were able to listen to a couple of the guys from the 86 team come back and talk yesterday. And uh, that was one of the most pumped up meetings we've had in a while. You know, those guys just telling their stories and, uh, you know, just the brotherhood that they, they still hold to this day. And it, um, it was really inspiring. And, you know, it's always fun, you know, to get a win on homecoming. And it's, it's awesome to see a bunch of alumni in the tents and, uh, you know, just to hear them cheering. Any advice that they give you guys during those pump up talks or what are, what are they saying to you while you guys meet up with them? Yeah, really it's just stick together. It seems like, you know, every team that's a winning team, um, it's a brotherhood and it's all about family and we preach that all the time and they just came and, and same, said the same message. So it seems like every team that we have that, uh, you know, is successful and can put together a championship season, it's, the message is family. Now, you know, you guys started off electric, you jumped out to a 21 nothing lead, and then in the second half, things got a little stagnant for you. What did you st see differently from Brown in the second half than in the first? Um, I think it was really more on us. We saw a lot of the same looks, and even in the first half, uh, we weren't playing great. There was a lot of missed opportunities, and, uh, you know, we did a couple big plays. Um, so in the second half, you know, we were still making some of those same mistakes, and they were capitalizing on them. So yeah, it's, it's, we always talk it's all about us. You know, we do good things, it's, it's on us, and we do bad things, it's on us. So we just got to, you know, sure up some of those mistakes. How do you keep your mental toughness when things start going wrong on offense? What are you guys saying to each other in the huddle, or what are you doing personally to keep your mind focused? Yeah, you know, just like strength training, we do mental training too. And, uh, you know, no matter if it's a good play or a bad play, you know, our immediate reaction is, okay, what's next, the next play? So, you know, after a touchdown, you know, we're thinking, what's the next play? You know, we need to get another first down here. We need to get another touchdown. And the you know, same thing after a fumble or a three and out, you know, it's the same mindset. You know, what's next? So it's, it's good never being too high or too low, especially on the sideline. I have to ask about the scuffles on the sidelines. First, well, they were both on your sidelines, but first it was the defense was out there. And then when you guys were out there, and again, talking about focus, how do you keep your composure and how do you get your teammates, hey, guys, like, let's, let's focus on the game. What do you guys do to, you know, get that, block that out? Yeah, we're a rowdy bunch, and uh, that's a, it's great to have that, but at the same time, you can't shoot yourself in the foot. So uh, Coach P lets it go a little bit and, you know, lets, loosens the chain a little bit. But whenever, you know, we start shoving and if there's ever a penalty, that's when we kind of cut it, you know. It's great to have energy, but you can't shoot yourself in the foot. Now, you guys dropped the first two games of the season. You turned around. Now you have a four-game winning streak. You're 4-0 in the Ivy. What have you guys done or what's working for you guys now that didn't work in those first two games? Yeah, we uh, installed a couple new packages on our offense, and uh, they've been really doing well and, and like I said we always say it's it's on us the first couple weeks we had some of those um, kinks that you need to work out and we've been able to work them out and in practice you know we just said we're just gonna work you know win or lose you know good game or bad game we're just gonna go out and work every day practice and that's what we've been doing now turning to you you had a career day you were one of the first wide receivers since 2003 to log over 200 yards how are you feeling about that did you know that you did this while the game was going on no, I had no idea. You know, I, I we always say never too high, never too low. So I was just thinking next play, I wasn't counting catches or yards or anything. And uh, so it was a great feeling to get the win. And then uh, when I heard, you know, about the yards and, you know, the history behind that, it's, it's always cool. At a school like this with so much history and so much tradition, you know, to be listed among those names, you know, forever. So it's, it's awesome. Now you guys are on the road next week at, at uh, Princeton. What are you guys going to tweak this week in practice in terms of offense? Yeah, it's just showing everything up. You know, we, we haven't watched the film yet, so we're going to see, uh, you know, what we can exploit, and we're going to learn from this. So I think, you know, just sharing up blocks across the line and on the outside, and, you know, the receiver's making plays and running crisp routes, and, you know, our quarterback's been great, and he's going to you know, keep doing that. The Quakers are now 4-0 in the Ivy League with a 5-2 overall record. They are on the road next Saturday for a noon game against the Princeton Tigers. Now, despite their late game comeback, the Bears now fall to 1-3 in the Ivy League with a 2-5 overall record. They are home next week against the Yale Bulldogs. 
From Franklin Field in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I'm Lauren Fody for a lot of sports talk.